Hi everybody and happy Sunday and welcome to the Coffee Comet. It's Mecca and Ryan and tonight we are going to talk about sex symbols. The definition of them now versus the past. But I think before we get into our lovely topic, we should talk about what sure. has has happened to the world. <laughs> this, yeah, it's a no, sad I'd rather day. not. I'm in mourning. I'm depressed about the situation. So you have tarred. I have who? Tarred. It's something that that's coming on um, online. And they call it tarred, and it's basically like post traumatic. Um, it's like Trump Trump depression. Girl, like everybody no. that cried. <laughs> Everybody that cried in that sad because Trump is the president. Well, I, I don't. Now, see, that never came through my timeline, so I have no idea about that one. But yeah, I was very shocked at the results. I, that I will say. But hopefully, with him going into office, that it'll just be an eye opener for others like so we can come together and figure out what we can do on our level so that we don't have the same situation either another four years or the next presidential election because yeah yeah like I said it's it's gonna be an interesting four years hopefully he does what he says he's going to do and I shouldn't say hopefully he's going to do what he said he's going to do. Hopefully he'll do right <laughs> by the, the country. And and then we can spend a whole show talking about the, the rights and wrongs of why Trump is, is become the president and the crap that has come after all of it with all the violence and division and all that stuff. But, you know, I'm not we're not going to be depressed. The whole show. Absolutely not. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Okay. <laughs> so the definition of a sex symbol is a a person widely noted for their sexual attractiveness. This could be a sexually attractive person. Some will call it a sex object. Some will call them a sex pot. I ain't never heard that. And sex kittens. So, since that is the definition... Sex symbol. I'm going to say that everybody knows Marilyn Monroe. Monroe is a sex kitten. <laughs> and one of my favorites, if you want to go back that far, is Lena Horne. Because she was gorgeous, honey. Gorgeous. I mean, the sex symbols of the past are totally different from what they are now. Honestly, I can't even acknowledge a lot of these uh, women, because I'm not going to call them anything else, but lovely women that people are dubbing sex symbols in 2016. Like the Kim Kardashian is considered uh, a sex symbol of 2016. Amber Rose is considered Well, they are. What they just symbol. said. Sexually attractive, just Nicki like you Minaj. feel about them, is the same way that our grandparents and ancestors was looking at these. Like, who is this hooker with her titties all out in this magazine but, cover? Or well, they just didn't have social media. <laughs> but see, the difference between how it was in the past and how it is now, the sex symbols in the past, there was an illusion of sex. There was like, okay, it wasn't full on. You pull out your magazine and some, oh, there's titties. The only way you saw that is if you got like the Hustlers and what's Playboy. Uh, Playboy. Other than that, you didn't see your regular magazines, which boobies all out, and your ass oiled up with, Bobby, with baby oil. Now, that's just, that's out there like it's, that's the thing to do. And, like like the Pam Greers back in the day, they used to they were more covered up. You didn't mean like I said, they gave sex appeal, but they weren't walking around like Amber Rose and what she's calling a bathing suit, but it's just dental floss. And it's just covering up nipples and going up her butt. I just don't see it's like, oh yeah, that's my role model, that's who I aspire to look like, that's who I want to, you know, 
the role model. So the sex symbols that people so a like, sex symbol is a role model. Some can be be a. It's not like a role model as far as she she has a sex appeal, but she has her business together. These chicks here, I can't look at Kim Kardashian, although I know that she has some business sense. But it's hard for me, like when I'm watching Black and uh, Black uh, China, I can't. It was amazing to hear that she went to college because. The way she presents herself, you would never think that she she had to tell, she had to tell you that who that she went to college. I told you she went to college. You didn't. Have, I said when I found out she did. Either way, you told You're me like, whatever. She doesn't look it. So that so that makes it's a lot. It's just like a lot of people out here that's teachers and lawyers and accountants and stuff, and they smoke weed or they turn the hell up. That's they, fine. You can do that, but when you walk out, I don't want my doctor coming out smoking a joint. I'm like, you next, you next. Come on, come on. No, I'm not gonna take you serious. No, nigga, you ain't about to examine me. No, you know you wouldn't fall for that either. You would be like, wait a minute, hold up. Did he just did did he have a blunt and he asked me to come in his office? You're not gonna be that cool. It's cool to be a sex symbol. And, you know, you don't have to have it all out. I've been saying that about Amber Rose and everything because Amber Rose is actually very gorgeous. She's so very So who pretty. do you think is a sex symbol of now? I don't have any ones that are, uh, that I look to as like, that, okay, that, 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 that's all sexy, I, but I know, I know, people. I know, Go I, know ahead. I know, I'm going to tell you myself, but Miss Obama, oh, Jesus, I'm saying her name makes me. Sad because she'll be leaving the office. But I think she oozes a kind of a sex appeal, but she's also the first lady. She represents herself nicely. She's somebody that I'm like, okay, she has her own form of sex appeal, unlike I said, who they're dubbing like. If that's what you want to go by, that these people are sex symbols, that I'm going to say a sex symbol like to me is Carrie Washington. Oh, the chick from, yes, I mean, the chick from Scandal. Yeah. Okay. But once again, do we see Carrie Washington's ass? She no, we don't. She ass out. What, where? But I'm going to say, where? if you, what do you mean where? I never see any, and that would definitely make front page if Carrie Washington sitting there with her legs. Not right open. now. There was a long time ago. Hmm. I'm saying, if that's what you, if that's what you going about, all oh, ass out, I'm talking about, Sexy. She does give sex appeal. She was in, I think, one of the, let me look this up. She was in one of the, like, um, sexiest women alive because just by her lips alone, she gives sex appeal. Right. But once again, that is not just, she'd be more so of the icons from the past. Which gave sex appeal, but they weren't showing all their ass. That's what they I'm didn't have all their about. coochies all out. I, that's what I'm that's talking what, about. But that's what I'm saying. saying. The, the, the sex symbols currently is what they're labeling sex symbols are Amber Rose and Kim Kardashian and Nicki Minaj. And we know all three of those have... Because to this generation, that's giving them sexual attractiveness. Their ass out is attractive to millions of people where they are noted sex symbols. That's what I'm saying. That's not a sex symbol to me. But that's like I you. said, in 2016, I haven't come across any woman. And I'm like, you know what? Sex appeal, sex symbol, I haven't At least come across. I, I don't think she gives that sex appeal. But she's a very pretty, gorgeous woman. And she's about her shit. But other than that, I, I don't know. I guess it's, sex symbol to me is like not only sexy... But you also have some other aspects about you. And I'm, I don't know, Alicia Keys, is, like I said, she's talented. I mean, they put Beyonce under a sex symbol. And she's, I mean, she doesn't, she just does a lot of sexual things. That Some of the stuff that she does, I don't think it's appropriate with her being a mother of a daughter. But that's just my opinion of that person. I mean, it's, it's your world. I mean, we all have our own opinions about who's a sex symbol and who's not. So, where's this Carrie Washington situation? Because I'm curious to know. Well, my connection is slow, but I am looking it up. Thank you. Yeah. 
Well, like I said, the the sex symbols that are of the now are totally way different than what they were. Naomi of Campbell the past. is a sex symbol. Yeah, because she's a runway model. I can see that. She, once again, another woman that is giving you sex appeal but not showing all her ass and she's about her stuff. Once again, with seeing Naomi Campbell... What does her... I'm asking a serious question right now. What does being about her stuff have to do with her sexual attractiveness? That's what I classify like a sex symbol. She's not only giving me this sex appeal, but she also... She has brains behind it. Like I said, looking at Black China and them, I never, hell, Black China, I never thought she would. I'm like, okay, is she smart? I mean, she's smart, but I'm saying what I'm saying, as far as being educated, I would have never put her in college together. And that's just because I'm like, you come off, you're a stripper and you act the same way. I can understand if you are a stripper because you was trying to get work your way through college and blah, 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 but... You leave the stage, and that's how you are when you leave the stage. It's like when you, it's just like you said, like if you're at home and you being sexy in your room, leave your sex in your room, and when you walk out, you walk out totally different. Like China, on the other hand, she clap, make it a clap on the stage, and she goes off the stage and still make it a clap in public. It's not like she's just doing this, going off stage, and whatever I do sexually, I'm doing it in the privacy of my home. No, she's on, she has made a brand. And that's another thing. People are making a brand out of this. It's not just like, because oh, that's okay, just, people just that's the think generation. I'm sexy. I'm not saying that I'm pro pop your coochie, buzz it open wide all over the internet and all over TV. But I'm just trying to say, in my opinion, going off the, the um, definition of it and everything, right now in 2016, that's what it is. People are, what Tammy quote quote end quote making a brand out of being naked. People are making a brand off of being in videos half naked, just like that was so big in the nineties. Video hoes. That's what it. That's what now led up to the ass out and all that stuff now, and that's what people are considering sex symbols because that's just this generation. It's just it is what it is. Right. So I mean. In this day and age, that's what a sex symbol is because they're letting it all out. Who is this? Um, well, how do you feel about that? I mean, if you had a daughter and all this, because like I said, if I had a daughter, I wouldn't want my daughter looking up to a Kim Kardashian. These these girls look up to this chick and Well that's because like Miss Cardi said, the parents is is looking at these athletes and celebrities and T V personalities to to all of us to teach and raise their families and their children. It's like why couldn't you my I know my mother used and I'm not saying that we're the you know where the huxtables and everything, but my mother and my aunts, even when we were in the house bored, cutting up, acting the fool, me and my sisters, they would make it a point to be like, don't don't complain about your skin, you're dark skin, so what? Love it, you know, love your hair, ain't nothing wrong with your hair, like ain't nothing wrong with your heritage, like love the hair that you have, love the skin you in. It's kids out here, it, it's parents out here that's not doing their damn job, and then they want to wait for Alicia Keys and India Ari and all of these people to come on TV to be like. I love my black. My black is beautiful. My melanin popping. They looking for Instagram to influence their kids instead of telling their kids that at home. So the way that I would feel is I would still let my my daughter know what is reality, what is real, and what is not. This is the world that they live in. This is the world that we live in. Half of them, yes, they're they smart and yes, they should exude that. But when most of them, I feel like, started their careers and started whatever contract they signed to get money or whatever have you, they did that shit to sell their soul for fame. So that's what they're going by. Like I said, when we had first season, I was talking about Black China and I was talking about Trina. Trina the rapper came out, she didn't know shit about rapping, but she came out and all she used was her sex appeal. She used, let me, you know, let me rap about sex. Let me talk about sucking him off. She used that, but this girl has a degree, graduated college, has a degree and could sell houses for a living if she weren't a rapper. She's smart like that, but... Shit, if the money is coming quick and all these extra perks is coming, you're going to sign that contract and be like, this is my easy way to get money because 
obviously this is what's selling. The same thing with Nicki Minaj. Nicki Minaj had, I feel like she sold out a little bit and maybe that's why I don't care for her because I followed Nicki when she was underground. She was jeans, straight hair, curly hair, long nails, and a tank top, straight New York chick. Then when she started to get noticed a little bit, then she started all that Barbie shit. And now she grown and sexy, but it's, I'm going to be all dominant style. I'm going to be shaking my ass. I'm going to be twerking well, and doing all this, Nicki this, Minaj that, and the third. And most so, music artists, they don't, they don't, they have no choice but to follow. You just said that they just have no choice because they're, the industry builds this person for them. Exactly. But, exactly. For money and for fame. Mm-hmm. A lot of people wanted fame. Like, Cardi B always said, she said, I always wanted to be famous. I always wanted to be famous. Granted, she listened to her dumbass, I feel like perverted ex-manager who told her to go to the strip club, was stupid and naive, went to the strip club, was stripping. Now when she got that love and hip hop platform, she started making it different. She still, you know, sexy, still wear her her breast out and ass out, would still talk a little reckless, whatever. But uh, to mind you. A little reckless? Cardi, to my, Cardi's, <laughs> Cardi is only, Cardi just turned 23 years old. So it was like she has a lot to grow, but like she said, don't depend on me. Don't, I mean, I know we come on TV and stuff, but also you can regulate what your kid listen to. You can regulate what your kid watch. Don't don't say that a Cardi is my hero. I don't want to be a hero. That's not being me. I appreciate the love from my music or whatever you like me on TV, but I'm not your parent. I'm not supposed to raise you. And it pisses. She she said it, and I agreed a long time ago that it pisses me off when they look at you like they get disappointed at what celebrities do like oh, i cannot stand miley she's disgusting she's this she's, she's that my kid is never listening to her that's fine but the but thing about it fine. is when you fall into the entertainment business you are taking on as much as you do not want to do that you don't want to be that role model you are now embodying that because of the simple fact that you are on tv your t- your life is out there so you really Honestly, as much as all these celebrities don't want to take it on, you are being a role model to these kids because these kids look up to all these celebrities. So when they see like the Nicki Minaj and stuff like that, they're not worried about how their lives are living when they're not on the stage. They're looking at how they are, how they portray themselves when they're on stage and when they're captured on these reality shows or whatever. Well, which maybe are I feel like a, maybe but, I sound like a prude, but that's. That's just where I said, don't let the television and all that stuff. That's when you monetize. If it has to do with children, you can't tell nobody once they grown as hell and if they still sad enough to follow all of that stuff. But that's when you tell your children, if you have to be that way, it's like, okay, you, it just, when you want to monetize it, it's just, you know, if you're listening to that as an adult and you hear your child listen to it, and you stop them from listening to it, or you tell them they can't listen to it, it's for a reason, because you seen it first. I was watching something Erica Campbell was like, uh, was telling Krista, her daughter does, does those little videos on Instagram where they sing and they dance or whatever, and she's lip syncing it. Mm-hmm. And she was like, I just hope you're not doing nothing crazy on it, because she will check. She was like, you're lucky that I'm a gospel parent, and your dad's a preacher, or whatever the case is, and we let you listen to regular music. And I'm pretty sure... They monitor the music videos, the TV shows, and all of that they watch. Now, it's probably a struggle when you got to drop your kids off to Uncle Ricky's house, and he ain't listening to nothing to Tupac, and his so kids is, Tupac. I'm just saying, Don't and his kids, <laughs> his kids is watching reality TV all day, then they, that's when they get a bit, I've, I've, cause I was that type, when they get bits and pieces, and that house, it was Disney, and it was all the nice stuff, and then going to my aunt's house, everybody listening to rap, everybody doing right. this and that. So you can't control that too much unless also you, I'm, I'm just take the kids to the proof aunt house. I'm not going to let them have that much fun or that much exposure. It's what you control in your home. And I don't think that everybody should but just even be with letting all the control that you can do in the world. You could control, you could try to control how they watch. Cause I can, you know, control what my sons watch and like movies and stuff like that. But there's a lot of things now. It's just like, it's there. You can, yeah. you, I can't keep you from it because I can't keep them off of the internet and stuff like that. So we have to be we have to be real about the situation. As, as lovely as we would love to block these kids from seeing all these, you know, uh, seeing like uh, uh, Nicki Minaj and whatnot on there and telling them, 
you don't want to be like that or don't portray what this is how she is on stage this is not how she is off stage they don't like i said kids don't see that all they know is when i turn on my tv and i see Nicki minaj popping it for the gods i want to pop it for the gods because why there's like if i go on youtube and i just i could put half of twerk in the search engine and i will get a thousand videos of twerking and popping and and all this type of stuff so it's hard to sit there and say you know i'm control everything I'm just going to control. Because like I said, mine is 16. And as much as I don't want them to sit there and see all this sexual stuff like that, hell, even the, the Disney Channel and stuff like that, they're supposed to be innocent. It's not. Yeah, it's, They're yeah. jokes. I be sitting there, wait a minute, that joke is totally inappropriate. SpongeBob? Why just, no. <laughs> we shouldn't have an episode. Finally retiring SpongeBob. But, but SpongeBob, <laughs> SpongeBob had a show where he he was cussing, but they kept bleeping, bleeping mm-hmm. it out. Yeah. No, SpongeBob. You right. SpongeBob. Well, yeah, I know that because I feel like I had a half conversation about this with one of my family members but of course it was more him talking (laughs) than actually trying to hear what I had to say and that's um kind of what I said like yeah control that I'm just saying like that's one of the methods I feel like that works and I also feel like talking like I said talking to your kids about what's real and what's not and most of the time kids are gonna ask you if now if you become that old 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 school parent that's like don't have sex don't talk to me about nobody don't talk to me about no no girl don't talk to me then of course they're gonna sneak around they're gonna do whatever they want and th- that's I'm not saying that's always 100% the case but it I is. figure out when you when you talk to your kids it's, when you're open about it the case. because my mom was <laughs> always open about us if we watched the movie it was like okay and a girl was kissing a girl she asked us questions about that if it was a, anything with pregnancy early pregnancy or sex or boyfriends or whatever have you anything about life she always talked to us about it and it was just like okay I see and I don't feel like a lot of people have that either, but we talked about that first season. A lot of guidance as far as family or when kids right. get curious, how to go talk to somebody, things like that. I don't know. I just feel like if not 100% controlling, then you should have that conversation instead of just letting TV or whatever raise your kids. I just don't. I'm Like I said, in 2016, I mean, I'm, I'm really trying to think of all the women that are out there that I'm like, okay, J Lo. What who could I consider? Who can I consider <laughs> a sex symbol? A the sex classy symbol. ones you can't agree no, with. No, it's not the with classy the- ones that I can't agree with. I guess I'm looking at the I mean, well, I'll take J Lo. I get you know, I take her because she know that's a fly girl. She does ooze um sex appeal. She doesn't do Taraji she- P. Henson. She just got into the game. Quick, trying to pull. She her. did not just get into Cookie, the game. Cookie, Cookie just got on, on the map. She, Cookie just got on the map. I mean, shade no shade. I love you know what Taraji is doing, but but she's current. She's very current, but she, she just got on the map. Uh, <laughs> but I will give you J Lo, and there's like I said, there's a lot of like you know, like I said, the little Beyonce. She's a She's okay, you know, I guess she's a sex symbol, but like I said, some of the things I personally... My favorite Tracy Ellis Ross is a sex symbol. I like Tracy Ellis. That ass alone is attractive. I like. Well, I just had to say that. <laughs> no, I will give you Tracy Ellis Ross. I like I Tracy Ellis Ross. Please, you, you that's because your girlfriend is obsession. But Tracy Ellis Ross is an, is a good one. I do. I mean, she does have a nice backside. So I, you know, mm-hmm. props to that. Yes, amen. And you know, she's she is another one that has sex appeal. She ain't got to be all. Little Kim down with the legs and the liquor bottle between the legs, and she's doing some stuff. That's how I guess that's what I look at as far as like a sex symbol. I could, I just can't label them other chicks sex symbol with these little teeny boppers and so many grown ass women looking up to like, oh my god, she just so that's a sex. I'm like, I can't, I can't give you sex symbol because when I think of sex symbol, like yes, you are sexy with your clothes on, and if you do have on minimum clothes, you're still sexy. It's just you, you're smart about yourself. You got something going on for yourself. Is what I see as a sex symbol, not somebody that all I know is sex. 
It's like, what else do you have? What other substance do you have? And these people that they're labeling sex symbols in 2016, what else do you have outside of that? Because if they take away, let's say they stripped you of your, your sex, what else do you have? Exactly. Crickets. You wouldn't have much to talk about and or nothing nobody else would want to hear. Just because I'm like, oh, okay, now you want to be the smart girl. But I don't know you for that. I know that it, I know that you clap your ass, so that's what you do. That's what you do. I'm sorry. I like, like I keep bringing up Black China. It's, it was very shocking to <laughs> hear that she was college educated. And it's and like I said, Amber Rose, she's gorgeous, but she just does the team too much for her being a mother. And that's another aspect of the, I always got a problem with these women who I can understand with you down. without. Okay. I can see like before having kids, I can see you being buck wild. Cause we all were, at least I know I was buck wild, but when you become a parent, it's like, you got to cut it down a little bit. I said my comment, if y'all didn't hear me, I said she calmed down because I still follow Amber Rose and she barely on social media. Every time I see her on Snapchat, she got on pants. And she, it seemed like she pulled herself away from the media just a little bit. So I say that she calmed down because I follow her on social media. She, was she no just had the slut walk. So? She was doing that regardless. How was that not calming down if she started something organization and now everybody wants to contribute to it? She, she got a book like, nah, called Being the nah. Bad Bitch. How long ago was that? Wasn't that just last year? I just, like I said, I think Amber Rose has more substance to her than what she's presenting. And maybe she is calming down because she's starting to see that she has more substance to her. And we're going to see another side of Amber Rose. But when you Google Amber Rose, you're going to see everything that I just said. Slut walk, bad, how to be a bad bitch. That's just not something that... I will want to present to my daughter and be like, you know what? Let me get you a couple of books, you know, women empowerment books. Bam. I'm not going to give her being a bad bitch. That's just not going to be on my, on her bookshelf. It's just not. And it probably, honestly, the title throws me off and it probably is an excellent read. Amber probably has probably, I don't know if this is true or not. If she, she probably has some wonderful things in there. That's probably maybe uplifting women. I'm not sure of it. It's about how to be a boss, how to be, how have your own businesses. I didn't. So read she's, it, so I she's trying to tell did. you to be an entrepreneur, but why do you have to have the title being a bad bitch? I don't, that I don't get. Well, Cause I, we're also, I that's another, feel. another word that, <sighs> I had a person. <laughs> the reason why on Instagram, they showed Jocelyn Hernandez pregnant. And somebody commented, and she's still calling herself a bad punta. I can't follow this lady. I can't take her serious. I'm not going to congratulate you with a baby in your stomach. Talk about you still the baddest punta. I got a bad, I got an issue with that. I'm like, okay, I ain't throwing no shade. But is her stomach really growing? Because it seems like Airy Pilcher. That stomach look about the same. <laughs> and I'm like, is your baby growing? Or are these your old ass pictures that we keep seeing? I don't know. But, you know, congratulations, Jocelyn. But I, got your baby I feel this in the same way that you feel about the Ambors, Kim Kardashians, and Black Chinas of the world. I feel that way about reality TV. It wasn't too long ago that I actually literally stopped watching um, Real Housewives. Y'all can ask here. I literally stopped watching reality shows because to me and basketball wise and stuff, it wasn't up until maybe last year or the year before when I picked back up. It was disgusting to me because I'm like the same way y'all feel about watch, looking at Amber Rose's ass throughout the summertime and Kim Kardashian and she's a mother of two and she's always naked. I felt the same way about these reality stars. Like, yeah, they're regular Joe Smoes, but once they do 10,000 seasons like they do just to get a check, they're now a celebrity. How are you somebody's mother? How are you a grown-ass 42-year-old woman always want to fight and bop somebody upside their head? But how can you get mad at the reality show TV, but you don't get mad that, at No, I, I didn't other. say... I didn't. I just said... I didn't say that I don't get mad. I said, on top of that, people don't point out reality stars. I'm putting the all only out. time that... And that's what I'm saying. I'm, I'm pointing everybody out. I'm not just saying, oh, Kim Kardashian is so wrong. Reality stars have a, a a role in that too, and people don't talk about that. I mean, the most talked 
about person, like I just mentioned, was Cardi B. And that was coming from last year. She was the most talked about reality star. But nobody talked about how Candy always wanted to be so classy, but she ready to fight and she ready to call this and that person a bitch and a thought and a hoe and all of this stuff. As well as everybody else that's on reality shows, they don't give them the slack for it too. And people let their kids watch reality shows and try to say that this is who they want to be like or this is the person that they look up to. They're in the wrong as well. Because I, I just don't, I can't fathom, I can't just picture my mother hanging out with a group of women and they just get together and just want to fight every damn time they see each other. That just boggles, boggles my mind. It's not cute. But it's just And it's petty. And it's, but it's entertainment. It's and then popping the their ass is entertainment too. Inter, it's all under entertainment, yeah. It's, but the Lord, once again, it's all under entertainment. And it's, it's like... It's sad, but this is what they want for fame. And it's too, it, it's kind of too late unless you. Actually, some of these celebrities don't want that for fame. Really, like even with the reality TV and the music artists, they don't want this brand. It's the simple fact, like I said, their people come yeah, up it's, with it's this brand. Yeah, it's kind of too late unless it's you like seasoned they don't, in the game. They don't and you want can, it. <laughs> and like, unless you seasoned in the game and you can go make pop albums if you was a rap star or you can be an actress if you were a singer. Like, unless it's late in the game and you earned your, your, your brownie points, you're going to be stuck at whatever you at. Because, I mean, I know Mimi... I mean, as thirsty as she come off, I know for a fact that she cannot possibly sit there and be like, you know what? I am totally okay with being known as a shower rod chick and she's with, <laughs> with, with a daughter. Because, right. I mean, that's what I'm always thinking about with my kids. Because I'm like, as much as, you know, the struggle is real and I probably could go out to the, the nearest strip club and give me a couple of coins and sit nicely, I always think... You know what? There's gonna be some teacher that's gonna walk up and through there. They're gonna see me pop and you locking know what? it. Exactly. And, and that's this is not cute. That's why I said it boggles my mind about the celebrities. Because if anybody watched the past reunion for Love and Hip Hop, everybody's jumping on Monique. Always have since the first season. Not me. Except for me. I love Monique. I love you, Monique. Okay, Monique, okay, Monique. if you in Atlanta, you want to come on this podcast, we will have the tea bags yes. ready, bitch. Okay. Yes. So everybody's jumping on Monique. And um, Nina acts at the reunion. Monique has been feeling victimized since season one. You came for her parenting. Brandy goes, I talk, I spoke about what I was passionate about. My son, my kid, my parenthood, my motherhood. Exactly. The key word was yours. You spoke on somebody else's and you got mad. So now y'all calling this her and Nikki and everybody's calling this woman classless. And she a hoe and she a whore. And who, who what mother does a sex tape? What mother continues to beat on another mother? What mother continues to put down another mother? And even after hearing Monisa's story from her mom on the first um, season's reunion, two years later, y'all still going in on this girl. Y'all still bashing her. And, and she tried to apologize. She tried to play nice. And you didn't want to hear it. Princess is a fake-ass thug. You want to be so gracious the whole show. But then when you see Monisa, all of a sudden, it's on, bitch. You want to fight. Sit down somewhere. Like, you're too fucking over that. You know you're not that hard body in real life. It's all for entertainment. But you got people looking up to you. But once again, when the people have, like, you are, your job for this show is going to be this. And that's what I, that's the only thing is, I would love to be on reality TV. I would love to have my own show. Why? Because I feel like I'm very entertaining. And I think I got some, <laughs> you know, people will watch. But the thing about it is, that's the only thing I don't want to be labeled as. Because once you get that label, that's all people see. But it's, it's how you portray yourself because... <laughs> Like Duffy said to Shawnee, Shawnee said, yeah, I do plan on kicking you out. She said, of course, because you drop everybody that's positive. Because when they, apparently, somebody said, I forgot what show I was watching, and they, was te- they said, you will get a text message in the middle of the scene. If you're at the table at brunch, you see a text message, the producers might say, bring up the time Peter was in Miami with some chick to Cynthia. And all of a sudden, shit's starting to pop off. Like, if you're in control of your show, is when they'll cancel. If it's positive... 
That's when they're canceled, unless it's some beef. I feel like everybody loves the Braxton Sisters. I love the Braxton Sisters, but I feel like if that show was way too positive and Tamar didn't go off the way that she did and Tawanda didn't have a breakdown the way that she did, they would have cut that show a long time ago because it was too hunky-dory. Tia and Tamara took their show off because they felt like they were sharing too much of their sister problems. When they started having sister problems is when they decided to do a promo saying, we are not doing Tia and Tamara anymore. It's letting went too much people into our um our lives and they want beef now like when she had when tamara started the real and y'all ain't you ain't gonna ever invite to you you ain't gonna ever invite to you they still hate each other from a show that they did in oh oh nine like and people expecting them to hate their siblings and hate their family members or whatever the case is so i feel like with that if it's too positive people not gonna watch but when right. they let the, but the, the producers take control, they well, turn it's up. It's a business, honey. It's a business. Yeah. That's why that is the way it is because it's a strictly business. But, I mean, as far as the whole, you know, sex symbols from the past and where they are now, it's a totally different totally different things because like i said the past sex symbols used to have yes i'm sexy but i'm you saw the sexy side of me you saw the educated side of me you saw the fierce side of me now with the the women uh, even men that they're labeling as sex symbols more so women get crushed more so than men but the sex symbols that they have in 2016 it's not even sex simple. It's it's just sex. <laughs> it, it, it's not. It's a, it's sex because it, it, you don't see any of the business side. And if you do, you find you hear it in the commentary like a little confessional thing because that's the only way I found out about um, China. It's like, oh, you went to school. Interesting, but you wouldn't get that by looking at her. But I mean, I just it's just funny to look at. But it's the different generations. Like you were saying, our parents, you know, probably had a problem with the what the sex symbols were at that time. And, you know, previous, you know, parents thought the same thing. So it's going to be funny to hear the next generation. I guess oh, my kids, my kids talk about, well, I got boys, but hear the, that generation talk about sex symbols and or who will be a sex symbol, I guess around that time when they get a little bit older and they'll be able to do the compare and contrast of it all and yeah. so it will be interesting well that was our show everybody we will be back next week same time same place on the coffee comment don't forget to like and follow our um Instagram, The Coffee Comment, our personal Facebooks, here on Spreaker to chat with us, and YouTube. And um, I've actually had a couple of people saying that they can't get on Spreaker, but I'm like, I don't know how hard it is. But if you go onto the Instagram page, it has the link that will sit that will bring you right to uh, Spreaker. So if you go to the Coffee Comment Instagram, it's the link is in the bio. Just click on it and we'll bring you to Spreaker and you'll be able to see all the past shows and tonight's show. And also like leave comments. You know, like I said, we, we always like to hear feedback. We also like to hear your opinions on our show. And we definitely do talk back to you. And we so. like to laugh with you guys, too. Yeah, Some of y'all funny. As hell. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, yeah, just look. Um, we're also on YouTube. I don't know if she said that, but we're also on YouTube. If you can't, simply can't work Spreaker, <laughs> and we're on YouTube. And you can find that. Um, just search the coffee comment, and we will be right there. So you guys look out for what our show is going to be for next week. On either Wednesday or Thursday. So we'll see you guys later. And have a good night. Peace. Bye.